measure was actually in an open area and the wall that I was holding on to was about a waist high or so, maybe just a little bit higher than waist high, but it was a wind that was coming right off of Nassau Bay. And so, I'm sorry, I heard a couple of things there. It's dark watching for debris here uh, tonight. Uh, but it was a very exposed area. I tell you what, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer here to the vehicle because I don't want to get hit with any debris. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer, maybe a little bit too close for comfort here. Uh, but that's kind of the, run, the risk you run uh, when you're talking about uh, landfalling systems and nighttime hurricanes, Stephanie, there's a real danger uh, when you're out in a nighttime storm because you just can't see any debris that could be flying in the air. Mike, I want you to talk more about these wind gusts because I am floored, as you said, getting those wind gusts right around 100 miles an hour. Was it the highest that you were able to get on your anemometer? You were saying, ah, those things aren't accurate. I only got 30 to 40 miles an hour. But that's as high as they actually were. I mean, talk more about that. How high were you ever able to get in any other storm? Well, yeah, I got to tell you, absolutely amazing. The highest wind gust I've ever measured with a handheld anemometer was the first landfall of Katrina in West Palm Beach uh, in Florida back in 2005. That was about a 57 mile an hour wind. I got a 69 mile an hour wind about three hours ago. And then all of a sudden, the winds just started cranking. And at one point, I got knocked off my feet. And then, uh, uh, and then, I guess I just, there was a wind that came up, walked up to the wall, hunkered down behind it, stuck the anemometer. 98, next thing you know, 101 miles an hour. And it is so loud right now, Stephanie. I mean, it is deafening. So, Mike, maybe you can describe to people, I heard you grunting a little bit. Maybe you can describe to our viewers why you were doing that. Well, one thing you got to keep in mind is this is what we do as meteorologists. We come out into the field, we study the science of weather, and we come out here just to show you what kind of winds a hurricane can produce, what kind of surge a hurricane produces, so that you can see with your own eyes as you watch TV what happens with these systems so that there's no mistaking what the necessary steps should be taken when a hurricane comes. Because when you have winds like this, you're absolutely 100% going to have structural damage. You're going to have roof damage. You're going to have window damage. Part of our building is falling apart here. Just the side of the building was peeled off. And in addition to that, Stephanie, when you have those kind of winds, you're going to end up getting some serious surge. We've got both of those right now. An incredible situation Mike. playing out in the Houston metro area right now, Steph. I mean, it's incredible. Mike, is it hard to breathe? Is that why your voice sounds a little fluttered? Uh, probably, and I've got to scream into the microphone too because it's so windy, but we're going to keep you updated, Steph, as Hurricane Ike makes landfall. Looking forward to the eye, that's for sure. We'll have more updates still to come. Welcome back into the Weather Channel's coverage of Hurricane Ike. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm live in Clear Lake, Texas. It is a southeastern suburb of Houston. The winds absolutely incredible right now. We're actually taking shelter behind a building. I'm taking shelter behind a vehicle because uh, there's debris flying through the air. I've actually measured a wind gust with a handheld anemometer at 101 miles an hour in an open, exposed area. The problem is, we're still in the eye wall, the northern eye wall of Hurricane Ike. And what that means is when you look at some of the bands, we could be looking at worse conditions, maybe even in the next 10 minutes. So we could get wind gusts that'll be higher than 100 miles an hour, powers out just about everywhere. And we are looking at significant storm surge on the western side of Galveston Bay that is inundating multiple communities, including Texas City, up toward Kima, and as you work your way up here uh, towards Seabrook and Clear Lake. We're going to keep you updated as best we can here tonight as we continue to follow Hurricane Ike, but let's head back to the studios now with Annenberg, Rich Johnson talking about uh, uh, online viewers tonight and what they're saying online tonight, guys. All right, thanks, Mike. Mike Bettis there over at Clear Lake, southeastern side of the city of Houston, obviously in that eye wall, Adam. Right.